Hey guys, welcome back again. Just putting on my dirty gloves. Okay, so in my last haul, my last video, I said I was going to do something with gold and black and white. So I've mixed my colours here and I'm only going to do a little one to begin with, one of my practice cards, because I'm not sure how much black I need. I've kind of divided my black into two cups and made it a little bit more because I didn't want the gold overtaking because I really want some contrast with the black. So anyway, I'll do a little practice and see how these ratio of colours go. Um, let me get my cups. I'm going to do three flip cups today on this smaller card and I don't know if you can see, I'll do it over here out of the way and I'm just going to lightly spray my cups with this silicone spray just like that and then I get my paper towel and just wipe the excess out. And they are ready for my layering of the paints. So this helps the paint release nicely. There we go. So uh, pouring medium today, three cups Floetrol, two cups PVA glue, one cup pouring medium, half a cup of water. Okay, and I'm gonna have another go at the treadmill silicone. It's a bit thinner this stuff, so I find I need a little bit more of it. I guess in weight it's about the same, but it's just so it's so, so thin. When you get a, a drop, it's a much smaller drop. When you use the coconut milk hair serum, you get quite a big drop. So it's probably equivalent to two drops of this. So um, I have got 120 grams of pouring medium and 40 grams of paint in my white and my black. My two golds, I've got different shades of gold, they're two to one. So I've got 100 grams of pouring medium to 50 grams of paint. And they're still quite thin. They probably feel thinner than my black. So I'm going to put, uh, what am I going to do? I've got 150 or 160 grams of each. I'm going to put in four drops. I won't put any in the black. I'll just put um, the two golds and the white, four drops. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is all I can count. Hey, come on. There we go. One, two, three, and four. And as I said, because this is quite thin, it doesn't need a lot of mixing because we don't want it to all break up and dissipate into our paint. Okay, so I'm going to start with the black. Put a little bit of black in the bottom of each. I do like having black on the bottom instead of white. I think it makes a better sort of overlay over the top of the paints rather than, oops, this is really thin. I'm gonna layer. You wouldn't think it would be so thin. It comes out of the jar and it's really thick and then you mix it two to one, which is thicker than your others, and it's still really thin. So don't be afraid to just pour your paint down the side. It just stops it from going right through to the bottom and mixing. And then you end up with mud, especially with these colours. Now I'm going to get grey, obviously, from mixing black and white together, but can't be helped. And I don't need all this paint, so I might not need it all. won't use it all. So I only need 600 grams of mixed paint for this size and I think I've got about um, 700 because I made up the extra bit of black. So I don't want to have too much paint on here because when you've got too much on, uh, you've got no, the paint's got nowhere to go to stretch unless you tip half of it off and I don't want to tip off all my cells. So it's a fine line. You have to have enough paint to cover and move really well, but you don't want too much either. Too much, you just you move your, your board or your surface, your canvas, and the paint just doesn't go anywhere. It's too much on there. So I'll leave that little bit of gold in the cup. If these work nicely, I've got a little bit of extra paint then to use 
Maybe tomorrow, if I get to pour tomorrow. Well, we'll use the black though. And we'll see what it's like with extra black, eh? Hey? Double black. May not work at all, maybe just too dark, I don't know. Not sure what it's going to do. But that's why I do these little cards, experiment on them. That way I'm not wasting too many um, canvases and too much paint. All right, so that's a little bit left in that gold as well. So I wonder what we've got here in weight. Okay, 197 grams, 206. So, all right, so it's about 600 then after all. So I've just left that little bit behind. And I guess if I need any extra to fill in my corners, I've got a little bit left in my cups. Okay, let's show you the colours. So we have just plain black. And we have a light gold. This one's called brilliant gold as opposed to metallic gold. Can you see the difference there? One's a dark gold, one's a light gold. I just thought I'd throw in a, two different shades of gold just for interest to see what happens. And then the, our usual white. I was considering putting in silver instead of white. But when I've used silver with black, it's gone quite a murky grey. And I know I'm going to get grey from the black and white anyway, but I'm hoping that maybe they'll separate a little bit and I'll get some black and some white rather than just a grey that I get when I mix black and silver. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's still Saturday. Saturday evening. Just going dark. It's been a beautiful day. Oh, I had a huge tree fall over in my backyard today. A big mango tree. Just fell over. None of the leaves were dead on it. I don't know what its problem was. I'm going to have to cut it up into bits tomorrow and take it away. Alright, let's do this. Can you see all the paint's gone from the top of the cup? This one and this one you can see right through. That's the silicon oil doing its job. I won't take that one back up. Maybe just on the corner. See how that bit's a little bit more messy than that bit? Always is. And it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to, you know, take it back up the middle or, or not. I personally prefer when I have the join here where I don't have that messy look. But sometimes you just think, oh, I don't have enough paint. I'm going to have to do it. Can I put my finger through it? Mm, I do. There we go. Why not? Okay, so this is the treadmill silicone in here doing its thing, making beautiful cells as it usually does. Got big cells here, lots of tiny little ones here. And see this white haze here? There'll be cells under that. I'll torch them and get the cells to come up. I don't want too many because when I start stretching I'm going to get more anyway pop up with the paint rubbing against each other. Let's go over that. See that was one tiny little pass over with the torch and we're getting lots of little ones come up. If you go over and over and over it, it melts the paint and they, they go out of shape. So you want to keep the nice round shape. You can see those there popping up. There's gold popping up in, in the underneath that white there. Do a little bit there. I'm going to go a little bit over here as well. Just there. Yep, see how those have all popped up there? Probably didn't need all that. Look at those. Okay, enough. I always tell myself, don't do it. And of course, you know, I do it. Because I think, oh, it's plain, it's boring, there's nothing there. But they, they pop up. They do pop up once you start tilting. All right, now we need to go for this corner down here first. Well, not a corner, but that triangle. And I'll tilt that off. don't like that. 
I shouldn't bring them back up, should I? I mean, oh, I've said it a million times, don't bring it up because now that's messy and don't like that. I won't listen to myself, will I? I need to do a live and everyone say, Julie, don't take it up the middle. Julie, don't torch. I will one day when I work out how to do a live, I'll do it. <laughs> um, what I do, I might finish this corner first. I never know which way to go first. Put that there because I don't want to lose all that lovely paint off the side there. We'll come back and bring the paint back to the middle. And then I'm going to go off down there. okay don't like that I might be able to pour it off later once I've turned this around and oh, I'm liking it though it's not too much black at all is it I don't think so once it dries and the gold really comes up it, it will pop all right I'm gonna go off that side a little bit because that's quite boring there because I've done it up this side I've got rid of that so let's see if I've got enough paint to Go over there. Okay, off we go. Was my daughter just getting home and then leaving again hardly ever see her anymore the youngest pops in grabs some clothes leaves again gone for a few days now i don't want to torch any uh, tilt anymore so i'm just going to cover that little area there with the blob of paint like so all right what are we thinking what does it need anything Big cells, hey. I'm sort of liking this half here, not so much that half. It's very stretched, that half. I wonder if I can get some paint to go over there. Get rid of a bit of that. Yeah, that's better. If you've got a lot of paint on your surface, you can move things, change things. If you don't like something, get rid of it. Metallics tend to make, as I said, metallics, they work differently and they've made this mix quite thin. Um, the even though I've only mixed it two to one, it's really quite thin, it doesn't even leave a mound. So it has made my overall mix quite thin. So it's moving easier. It's not really a good thing, but it's moving more. than the thicker mix would. All right, now I'm just playing a little bit with the composition and I think that will be it. We have to learn to stop fiddling us pourers. We have to learn to say enough's enough. Okay, so plenty, plenty of silicone oil in that. And again, because my mix was thinner, the paint's been able to spread more and create bigger cells. The thicker the mix, the less it spreads and so your cells are smaller. I think if I do this again, and I will do it again, uh, I, I'll thicken up my metallics even more uh, because, yeah, they have made the whole mix a lot more watery than I would like. Quick torch. Put it over here in this area, see what's going on under there. 
and a little bit up here under this white haze. So I've, I've managed to keep a little bit of white. It hasn't gone too, too grey, which is good. I don't know if I love love it. It doesn't, you know, it's not really a striking colour palette. But it's interesting and I think it will work better with the thicker mix and uh, less oil. Because that's just a lot of cells. You can hardly see any background. So I'll, I'll do another small one before I attempt a big one and just get my ratios correct with this metallic. But uh, some of the cells are pretty. I mean, they're not they're not beautiful. They're they're kind of elongated. See how they've stretched out of shape? That's that tells me that the mix is too thin. When they stay nice and, and round and in their good shape, then you know that you've got a good mix. Uh, what can I show you? This one. This is a good mix. See the cells are more more round. They're better shaped. They've stayed separate. These ones have all bumped into each other and uh, lost their round shape. So, but it's the, it's the gold, it's the metallic that's done that. If I was using just regular paints, it wouldn't have happened. They would have been a, a lovely shape. It's just that the metallics have gone thinner and made my whole mix thinner. Lesson learned. This is why I experiment on my little cards. Once it dries, the gold will certainly pop up. It looks a little bit hazy at the moment and not very bright, but it will it'll look much nicer when it's dried. So I will keep experimenting with this color palette and hopefully I can do another one tomorrow. Uh, I'll keep the same ratios of, of colour and make it a bit thicker and cut down on the, the um, treadmill silicone and try again. Alright, I'll see you then. Bye for now.